At the Olympics, a Belarusian sprinter says that her team tried to force her home after she criticised her coaching staff. This is News Review from BBC Learning English. I'm Neil and joining me is Roy. Hello, Roy. Hi, Neil, and hello, everyone. If you would like to test yourself on the vocabulary around the story, all you need to do is head to our website, bbclearningenglish.com, to take a quiz. But now let's hear more about that story from this BBC News report. An Olympic sprinter from Belarus is said to be seeking asylum in Europe after claiming she was being forced to return home from the Tokyo Games by her country's officials. Kristina Tsimanovskaya is being given protection by Japanese police. The Czech Republic and Poland have offered to help, and the UN Refugee Agency is involved. The Belarusian authorities say she was removed from the team because of her psychological condition. Belarusian sprinter Kristina Tsimanovskaya claims that her country's officials were trying to force her to return home after she criticised her coaches. She is now in the protection of the Japanese police and she is seeking asylum in Europe. Okay, well, you've been looking around the world's media at this story. You've picked out three really useful items of vocabulary that can help people to talk about the story and understand it. What have you got? We have standoff, against someone's will, and kidnap plot. Standoff, against someone's will, and kidnap plot. OK, let's have a look then at your first headline, please, Roy. OK, our first headline comes from the UK, from The Mirror, and it reads, Olympic sprinter who criticised regime in airport standoff as she refuses to fly home. Standoff. Situation in which neither side wants to agree. OK, so this word is spelt S-T-A-N-D-O-F-F. And you'll notice there I, pron- I spelt it as one word. In the headline, it's hyphenated, but you can use it in either way. You will see it in both ways. And it basically relates to a situation in which two parties or two people cannot agree. OK, Roy, I think I know this situation from various movies I've seen. Uh, where you have one group of people or one individual with a gun and another one with a gun and they're pointing at each other and neither one of them wants to compromise. Yeah, so it's all about that idea of neither willing to compromise. And you're absolutely right. Um, It's quite commonly with two people with guns, neither one wants to leave the safety of where they are. So they're both stuck or staying in their position and they're in a standoff, if you like. But in this situation, it more relates to a a situation where neither person wants to agree to the terms and neither person is moving. It's not about guns in this case or in a a film. Yes, and probably most commonly guns uh, and violence are not involved in this uh, when we're talking about standoffs. Can you give us another example, maybe from the world of commerce or business? Absolutely. So yeah, as you say, it's quite commonly used in business and it maybe relates to a situation where two companies or two parties from two different companies are trying to agree terms on maybe a deal or a takeover, but neither one is willing to compromise or accept the other's terms. So there is a standoff. They're not willing to move. Um, And it's also commonly used in other situations, for example, legal situations, uh, perhaps a divorce where there is a standoff between the two people that want to get divorced, neither one is willing to agree to the other's terms. Yeah, okay. We can also see this word, well, a very similar looking word, but it's an adjective to describe uh, a certain type of person. Uh, Standoffish. Is that similar? Um... Not really. This is, yeah, basically, let me give you an example. The other day I went to an online party and I was really happy and I was ready to celebrate, but nobody was speaking to me. Nobody, nobody was talking to me. They were all being really unfriendly and very formal. They were being a bit standoffish, as you'd say. So it it relates to a person who is uh, unfriendly or being quite formal. The opposite type of person to you, Roy. (laughs) Thank you. Shall we get a summary? (laughs) 
To hear another story about a standoff, we have one about North and South Korea. Where can our viewers find it, Roy? All you need to do is click that link. Okay, let's have a look at your next headline. So our next headline comes from the UK again, from the Telegraph, and it reads: Belarus Olympic sprinter forced to airport against her will after criticizing coach. Against someone's will, doing the opposite of what someone wishes. Yes. So this expression is three words. The first word against is a g a i n s t. The second word is that like it can be a word like my, your, his, or her, and the third word is will. W i l l, and it relates to doing something that somebody doesn't want or somebody doesn't wish. Yeah. Now some people might be confused. That little word will. Very common. People associate it with when we're talking about the future. This is not the same word. No, no. That 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 I will explain it. <laughs> so that little word will is everywhere, and it's a modal verb, as you say, commonly used to talk about the future, potentially a decision made at the time of speaking. So you say, oh, "I'm going to the cafe." Okay, I will come with you,、um, but not in this sense. This sense, it's actually being used as a noun, and it has a very different meaning. And it's basically about wishes or intentions in this case. Yeah, and we're talking about、um, sort of strong wishes. We're not talking about、um, you know wanting to have、uh, a biscuit with your cup of tea or something like that. No, no. So in the case of the headline, it's basically saying that、um, the athlete was being returned home,、uh, but she didn't want to go back. So it was against her will. That was her intention. To not go back. So this word "will" is used in a in a word people may have seen、uh, connected to people's strength of personality to complete something which is perhaps a bit tricky. Willpower. What's willpower?、Uh, absolutely. So willpower it relates to your resolve or your ability to your mental ability to to do something.、Uh, let me give you an example. We commonly use willpower talking about overcoming something like smoking. So if you decide to give up smoking, many many years ago I used to smoke cigarettes,、uh, and I realised that one day they weren't healthy for me, and I wanted to give up. And it's a very very sort of difficult process, or it was for me. Uh, but I threw those cigarettes in the bin, and I said no more. And I had、uh, I had to lose a, use a lot of willpower there to to really get through that because it was very difficult.、Uh, but I had some I had a strong will. We can say it as that way as well.、Yeah. But willpower is、yeah. the thing that helped me overcome smoking. Okay. Yes, you might need a lot of willpower to help you move ahead with your English, but、uh, I'm sure you can do it. Follow Roy's smoking example. Let's get a summary. Now, talking about the other will, the future will, we have the、uh, perfect program for you, don't we, Roy? Yes, we do. All you need to do is click the link in the description to check out that episode of the Grammar Game Show. Excellent stuff. Okay, let's have your next headline. Okay, so our next headline comes from the Australian, and it reads: Tokyo Olympics 2021, Kristina Simonovskaya kidnap plot. Kidnap plot, plan to take someone without their consent. Yes, so this expression is two words: K I D N A P. Second word: P L O T. Kidnap plot. And it's a plan to take somebody against their will. Yeah. So that first word, kidnap, that that is the taking someone bit, isn't it? It it is. Yeah. I I like to explain it to my students as saying it's like stealing a person when you you take that person and they don't want to be taken to kidnap them. And quite commonly, you you see that connected with money. The people who take the person, the kidnappers. Ask for money, which is commonly known as a ransom.、Uh, however, in this case, there's no implication of money being asked for. Yeah. So we've got kidnap, which is stealing a person, as you say, and then we've got this word plot. Now, the word plot 
is usually connected to stories, isn't it, Roy? What's, why is it being used here? Well, yeah, you can use the word plot in the terms of a story of a film or a book, but that's not what it means in this case. It's a different use of, it's a different word. Uh, plot in this case is a plan or intention when a person or a group of people are coming up with a plan, and it's usually quite a negative plan. It's uh, a plot against someone or a government. So it's a negative plan, a dangerous plan to maybe take down someone or take down a government potentially. Yeah, you can use this if you're talking about someone who you think is making a plan against you, which is not going to be good for you. You can say, what are you plotting? Are you plotting against me? Yes. Yeah, you can use it as both a verb and a noun, a plot or to plot. Exactly. I, I think a good example of that is Rob. You know what he's like with his biscuits or my biscuits more like the other day I could see Rob looking at me eating my biscuits and you could see in his eyes he was planning something. He was plotting against me and suddenly I received a little uh, noise on my computer. He sent me an email saying, look at this. You have won something. I looked and then I looked back and my biscuits were gone. That was his plot. You can't trust that guy, can you? <laughs> Not at all. Not with biscuits, anyway. <laughs> okay, let's get a summary. Time now then, Roy, for a recap of the vocabulary, please. We had standoff, situation in which neither side wants to agree. We had against someone's will, doing the opposite of what someone wishes. And we had kidnap plot, plan to take someone without their consent. If you want to test yourself on the vocabulary, there's a quiz on our website, bbclearningenglish.com. And we are also all over social media. Thanks for joining us and goodbye. Bye.